Oh, hey there. Eat less and move more has been one of the fitness industry's most tireless calling cards. Hell, I've even recommended this to people. I've even said that out loud. And it's easy to think that that's the solution, especially if you've had some success in the past. I remember losing a bunch of weight and feeling really strong when I was doing intermittent fasting and keto. And I thought it was the bee's knees. I wanted everyone to do the same thing so that they could feel as good as I felt. The problem is the results don't scale. In fact, I went back to keto just a couple of years ago to try and see if I could re-spark that, reignite that passion, reignite the romance and, and keep the good times going forever. But alas, it actually didn't help me. I moved further away from my goals instead of closer. And if that's ever happened to you, or you tried to go back to a diet that used to make you successful or a strategy that used to work and it stopped working, then this video might just give you the answer you're looking for. Hey, my name's Coach Josh, and I'm a proud veteran who's had the honor to work with United States Army soldiers, professional roller derby athletes, and everyone in between. And today, I help people think holistically to overcome age, injuries, and the disease of conventional thinking to live their best life. Let's go. All right, team, let's break down into our, its component parts what we mean by eat less and move more. Now, eat less, I'm assuming we're talking about eating in a calorie deficit, right? That's a layman terms, layman way to describe it. Well, deficit from what, right? So in order to have a deficit, you either have to know what you normally eat every day and, and track it consistently, uh, consistency, uh, track it consistently. Otherwise, if you're like me, your days might look drastically different from one another. So it's very easy to not have an accurate baseline on what you eat in a given normal day. Or are you considering that your baseline from which you're drawing a deficit, your base metabolic rate? Uh, is it, wh wh what is your base me metabolic rate? How do you measure? What formula are you using? And then are you in accounting for your activity level from your base metabolic rate? And this might sound really easy. Okay, Josh, like I'm, I'm lightly active uh, according to the, you know, most of the common vernacular of the charts. I'm going to use a 0.2 times my body weight and multiplier for my base metabolic rate. Cool. Is that consistent? Are you consistently doing that? And you might say, yes, I'd live, I do exactly the same thing every single day of the week and I have no variation to my life, in which case, great. I'm a cyborg like you. However, what you'll notice is that if you are actually accurately tracking your activity, your calories, and your BMR, and you're in a deficit, you might notice that there is downward pressure on your activity the longer you stay in a calorie deficit. So meaning if you're actually on a diet and you're dieting and you're, you're, you're uh, eating f f fewer calories than you were the week before, you build up fatigue, you, you build up a sluggishness that actually makes it harder to keep the same consistent activity over time. That pressure increases until you, you break your diet or you restore your energy levels or um, you meet your goal and you reverse diet out of it. When it comes to your base metabolic rate plus your activity level and you're doing it consistently and you're consistently on the diet, you're gonna have consistent downward pressure on your energy levels, making it more difficult to maintain your activity levels the longer you stay on the diet. And you're gonna have to recalculate your base metabolic rate as you lose weight. So you're gonna to have to update your numbers as you go. If you're willing to do all of that, then you can, quote unquote, eat less, stay in a calorie deficit, and do your part in maintaining your diet on the way to your dream physique. However, complications shall occur. Complications will occur the longer you stay on the diet. At first, you're gonna feel great got a little energy coming from the stress hormones, mobilizing fat stores. Hell yeah. I feel like a million bucks. I should be a freaking model. So waistline starts to drop. Everything's going your way. But diet fatigue starts to set in. All right. That aforementioned pressure on activity levels starts to accrue. And now you don't feel like going for a walk anymore. Pretty soon your activity level drops. Calories stay the same. Metabolism stays the same weight comes back on. 
So even though you're dieting, you're not getting the results any longer from being on the diet. What gives? I know, I know, I know. Something's got to be wrong with your blood. I'm low T. I'm low T. I got to get my blood checked. Whew. Fine, let's do that. So you've been on your diet long enough to stall out and have things stop working, but you didn't end your diet at a blood-fueled binge at the bakery. Instead, you stuck with the diet, and even though you feel like trash, you keep going and going and going, feeling worse, actually putting on a little bit of weight. Now, you're in what I like to call the death spiral, right? You start going to your doctor or someone who actually cares about what you think, maybe a naturopath or an acupuncturist, you go to an endocrinologist, you get some blood work done, and you're starting to figure out that there's a lot going on. Your blood work's a little off. You got maybe high cholesterol, low T. Maybe your hormones are out of whack. Maybe you're pre perimenopausal, premenopausal. Hey, and as for a guy, that's pretty impressive to have all of those things at once. Now, you keep going and keep going, and what you find everywhere you look is multiple ways to measure what you already knew from the beginning that you feel like shit, that you look like shit, and something has to change. So now you're low T, hypothyroid, and you have plenty of scientific evidence to back up what you can clearly see in the mirror. Now you're searching for whatever ingestible, injectable, whatever you have to do to go back to the lab to find a way to get back to feeling like yourself again. This cycle of investigation, experimentation, and spiritual seeking can teach you a lot about your body and about yourself. Hell, if you get really messed up, you can find yourself becoming a health coach, maybe even starting a YouTube channel where you get into the weeds and debunk fitness myths until you're trying to explain to strangers in a coffee shop what is it actually you do and you can't come up with an answer that even satisfies your own internal monologue. Let's avoid that death spiral. The wise warrior sidesteps the death spiral by using a long-term approach to nutrition. This ancient bro science wisdom is taught only to young Padawan once they've successfully passed the trials or successfully killed a Sith in single combat. The reverse diet is the, the long-term strategy to get you from a diet that used to work into a diet that works for good. Two steps forward, one step back is how you do the dance of the diet without hating your life, going on a rampage, or wasting thousands of dollars, and most importantly, months and years of wasted time and energy, not doing the thing that makes you feel good. So when it comes to the reverse diet, the, this is a, another way to find your active maintenance or the most amount of calories you can eat without putting on additional body fat. And it's best used when a diet is complete or when you've accumulated so much fatigue from being on a diet that you need a diet break, but you don't wanna put on weight. What do you do? First, you make sure that you're only eating foods that you like to eat, and that's the bulk of your diet foods. Number two is that you are consistently maintaining your activity levels, and this is important because if you drastically drop your activity levels all of a sudden, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to put on body fat. So you're finding foods you like to eat, you're consistently doing the same amount of activity each week, and then you have been on a diet for nine weeks or you need a diet break or you've finished and found your goal. So all these things being true, you then are ready to add 5% of calories uh, of the current calories that you're eating. You add 5% in addition to that uh, from carbohydrates and or fats and you measure your waistline and your scale weight twice in one week. And then you add another 5% and then you measure again. And what you do is you continue to week after week, gently adding in more calories until all the diet fatigue is gone, your energy levels have returned, and you are able to eat more food without putting on uh, unnecessary body fat. And you're, you found your active maintenance, meaning that the amount of calories you can eat without putting on body fat, when you add a little bit of calories and then your waistline starts to expand and you see that you've added weight on the scale and you, you're adding a little bit of body fat, then you back off to the last 5% increment and there you have it. You have discovered your active maintenance and you've successfully completed the reverse diet. 
Now you are set up to diet again further when you're ready and you've taken a, a decent break. Or if you found your ideal uh, physique and goal weight, then you're stopping there and you're going to rest on your laurels and enjoy your life. Try it out.